Well, we've come to UCM at the nunnery and we've got uh, Gail and also Paul. We'll talk about uh, UCM talks that are coming up. And let's we'll start you, Paul. First of all, maybe some people don't know this is what you do, because yeah. I was thinking you just, as, you know, as with your football head on. All that. Yeah, so um, reasonably recently, I've, I've started full-time now as a lecturer of sport at um, University College. Um, I have been sessional lecturing for the last three years. Um, so yeah, this is, this is my day job, um, although people have seen my <laughs> mug for various other reasons in the last few months. And we'll talk about that another day. Yes, indeed. But I know you're, you're kicking off the UCM talks, aren't you? So it, what is it, just sport in general? Yeah, so um, Gail um, is really keen to, to promote um, research on the Isle of Man and, and um, trying to push that along a little bit. And, and um, I, in my other job, I work with <laughs> Isle of Man Sport um, and, and we've basically uncovered lots and lots of research out there that, that just helps us to identify why the Isle of Man is so good at sport and why we're able to produce so many fantastic athletes and um, the title of the talk is uh, a sporting gold mine you know, and, and why the Isle of Man is, is able to produce so many talented individuals in sport so in the talk I discuss about some of the research really that isn't necessarily done on the Isle of Man but is very relevant to the Isle of Man from um, anthropology, sociology, psychology and sporting development which people might be interested in but it also crosses over into the wider community and how the Isle of Man can be and is an, an amazing place to be good at something mm-hmm. um, and how can we can turn the volume up maybe on those things that we're exceptional at but also be aware of some of the risks that might mean in the next 10 or 15 20 years that amazing sporting production line might be at risk um, and, and how we can maybe mitigate against some of those issues that are maybe on the horizon. Interesting. We'll come back on this. Uh, Gail, in general, there's lots of talks in the season, aren't there? Are they, are they all going to be held here? or where? Yeah, so this is the second year of our full UCM talk series. Um, and not surprisingly for an education institution, we have a lot of staff, we have students, and we have a lot of associates who undertake research in a broad variety of areas. And so this is about bringing you know the the outcome of research or just the beginnings of research and having a conversation with the general public about that so they're open to anybody um, we have a series of eight all the dates are on the website but they're always on a Wednesday this year for one one of our talks in January and um, we're actually teaming up with the Mountain View Inf- Innovation Centre in Ramsey because they um, have also launched a series of tech talks as they're calling them um, and that one is about alternative energy and climate change and it's kind of where we overlap but but now the purpose of these talks is is to have new ideas to, to promote research to engage in discussion so Paul as will the other speakers will half of the hour will be spent with Paul presenting um, and then the rest will be about a, a discussion and we have great discussions mm. some of them really you know people get really engaged so it's just it's just a good hour a good hour for your brain and uh, to get you stimulated about thinking about things differently. I guess it can challenge you as well, can't you? Because you might get all sorts of questions thrown at you. Very much you know I love doing these sorts of things because you, you, you maybe go in there with a thinking that you understand the area exceptionally well and then someone from a completely different field will throw a, a curveball at you and it really <laughs> challenges your thinking but it also expands and develops your thinking and um, enables you to to understand how other areas of our community can really benefit in the little bit that we do but maybe hopefully how the little bit that we do can help those other areas as well so it's about us growing and sharing and building a, a research community i guess but also ultimately to develop our our community and be innovative and uh, and be able to adapt to the ever-changing world around us sounds fascinating uh, if people want tickets eventbrite i'm guessing on this eventbrite yeah, yeah if you just put ucm talks eventbrite each talk what you can book through through eventbrite and that's 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 what eventbrite's for it gives an indication of how many are coming so we know which yeah. room to We've use got plenty of facilities here no? yes we, we can we can expand to the numbers that that that, that, that register and yeah. you mentioned the one in ramsey so people who don't want to get in a car on a dark night and head <laughs> south is how they put to me when they interview That's right, them. the Northerners can go to that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, this is interesting. Are you always open to new ideas about things that you'd like people might be, actually would like a lecture about? Almost. Yeah, I mean, it, it's this year's schedule reflects people like Paul, who has, has done research. The, ne- the next lecture in December is Professor Peter Edge. He's coming over from Oxford Brookshire University, but he's a great friend of the island. He's a constitutional expert, and he's been comparing the Isle of Man constitution with the constitution of small nation states mm. uh, around the world. So, you know, that's a complete change of gear from yeah. Paul's talk. And, and, and then in January, we have our alternative energy talk. So we, we, we're deliberately eclectic because we want to appeal to a range of people. Um, but it is, as Paul's saying, showcasing the island is, 
there's a lot of research going on the island. It's not just within educational institutions. There are independent researchers. There are people who come to the island to do research. And research can sound a bit kind of uh, a bit, bit, bit sort of highfalutin and, and, and highbrow, but it's actually about understanding how things. So next week it will be understanding why has Isle of Man punched above its weight in sport. In, in December, why? Do, how does the Alaman Constitution work, and can it be changed? Are there ideas for things? So, you know, research is one word, but understanding how things work is at the heart of our UCM talks, and that's why we have such an eclectic mix. Mm-hmm.